And I have not seen these yet. They've just been handed to me, so I'm just going to go through them, and we'll tell you a little bit about what's going to go on a little bit later. Okay, so why does security keep staring at me? <laughs> uh, who, who wrote this one out? Let me see. Let's see what you look like. Where are you? We can probably tell why they're staring at you. Okay, that's a good question. Okay, uh, dinner outside, maybe barbecue? Barbecue? Yeah. Dinner outside, maybe. Is that yours? <laughs> Look at that. Okay. Well, how much would you be willing to pay for dinner? Mm, 25. 25? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what's funny? When we first started the Upper Room back in 2009, and by the way, September 2009, which means tonight is September 2019, it's our 10 year anniversary. <laughs> we used to actually provide dinner for a donation. And we stopped that real quick. <laughs> I think we did it twice. And when we realized, eh, you know, the donations just aren't there. So uh, that's why we don't do it. Okay, have you thought of taking your talented artist and going on the road? Actually, is that yours? Look at these right in front here. Um, you know, we have thought of doing something like that. We've thought of doing upper rooms in other areas just the logistics of it and uh, the financial part of it is very difficult because if you've been here before, you've heard me say many times, this is not a money-making venture and it's not for that. So it, it takes a lot of donations and a lot of people behind it, but keep praying, it might happen. Okay, whose birthday are we celebrating today? I don't know, <laughs> whose birthday are we? Who's it? Robert, Robert, okay, Robert, stand up and say, we'll say happy birthday to you. Everybody say happy birthday. <laughs> Very good. Happy birthday. Blessings. Okay. Um, I've got to find my glasses. But um, name. I'll come back to this one. I can't read it. Um, <laughs> well, thank you. Very. Are these 150s? Very good, okay. Um, New Year's Eve every year. Yeah. Love this place. Oh, thank you. Who wrote that? Oh, did you? Okay. <laughs> the birthday boy. Yeah, you know, we do it every other year and uh, until, in, so this, uh, this, this year is an off year. We did it last year. So unless some things change, we, we might do it every year, but as of now, it's just gonna be every other year. I know we get that all the time, but. It is so much fun. Okay, why do you bring to the upper room? Who, or who do you bring to the upper room and who will you find? Well, I think that's up to you. Who will you bring? Who will you bring to the upper room and who will you find? Um, well, um, I'm not sure I understand this question. Who wrote this question? Who you mean? Who are we going to have in for the upper room? Well, it's, it's always, you know, we are always... Um, well, let's say we've been doing this for 10 years. We do 12 shows a year, basically. Um, and we've had a lot of notable people in, in the Christian community, either artists, uh, musical artists, comedians, speakers of note. And we're always looking for people to come. We've had a lot of repeat people who are very popular and, and draw a lot of people out. So, yeah, that's how we kind of do it. So um, I'm trying to get through these quickly. What was your... I forgot this gentleman... Gave me glasses here. Um, what was your motivation for creating the upper room? All right, I'll tell you the story very quickly. We did not start out, or we did not set out to start the upper room. Uh, ten years ago, a little bit more than ten years ago, uh, I was invited, my wife and I were invited to hear a, a former NFL speaker uh, speak at somebody's house. And this individual had just written a book about the blessing of the Father. His name was Ed McGlasson. And... Um, I was very impressed with the, the message that he had, and so I asked him, I said, Ed, would you be willing to come to our home group and, um, and speak? He said, yeah, that'd be great. So we went back to the home group and we said, hey, we've got Ed McGlasson coming to speak. Why don't we make this, you know, open this up to a lot of different people? So we invited friends and family, and by the time we did that, we had, I think, close to 70 people. So we didn't have it at my house, so we ended up doing it in the upstairs of an office building over in Irvine, hence the upper room. 
And um, uh, so what was the question? <laughs> the question was, what was your motivation? Oh, it went so well. It went so well that we decided to do it again. And then we did it again and again. So we just, um, it, it, the second person we had was, how many remember the, the, old, the broadcaster, Warren Duffy? Remember Warren Duffy? And he was actually the one that, that came up with the upper room. I was having lunch with him one day, and he said, Ron, why don't you call it the upper room? I thought, oh, perfect. So God rest his soul. And um, yeah, so that was how we kind of came up with that. Um, has anyone died on stage? <laughs> Just this. Well, that may happen tonight. I don't know. Um, no, nobody has died on stage. Um, yeah. Oh, professionally. Okay. You know, I don't think that's happened. You know what? And, and I'm saying this, and I'm not saying this because I'm biased, but you know what? We've had such great guests here at the Upper Room, and every show is unique. Every show is different, whether it's comedy or music. It's just been great, and uh, it's so good to see some of these artists that have been around for years who still bring it, you know? Uh, the most famous person. Sorry? Yeah, there you go. The most, somebody's asked, who's the most famous person we've had on stage? I, I don't know how to answer that one. We've had a lot of great people. Um, Phil Kagi, very well-known guy, yeah. So, yeah, and we had, uh, well, yeah, they're all famous. Uh, why do they charge for snacks? <laughs> Did you hear the part earlier how I said we don't make money here? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Ron. Do you, do you sing or play an instrument? I do, actually. And have any, anybody ever been here when, I've, when we've played with my band? Yeah. Good. No, that, that's about the worst applause I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I, I play guitar and I sing, and I do neither of them very well, but I have fun doing it. And so there's a group of guys that we play with. We're called the Upper Room Dudes. And uh, we go by the acronym, but... Uh, I'll let you figure that out. Um, which act that's never performed at the Upper Room would you love to get here? Richie Fure. Richie Fure. Um, actually, I've talked to Richie, and uh, it's just been kind of a back and forth thing for a long time. I talked to him before he went, and those of you who may not know Richie Fure, he is a Christian artist. He was originally known with the group Buffalo Springfield back in the 60s. And Richie became a Christian, was been a pastor in Colorado for the last 30 plus years. But about, I don't know, five or six years ago, he was going on a tour with Buffalo Springfield, kind of a reunion tour. And he said, when I get back from that tour, I I'd love to come out and do the upper room. And so when he came back from that tour, his, uh, his equity went way up, you know, and so he uh, has management around him now and so forth. So it's a little harder to get to him, but we're still working on it. Um, is the upper room affiliated with a church? No, we are completely independent. Uh, we're not a church. We are a 501c3, so any donations that you make to the upper room are tax deductible, but we are not affiliated with a church. This building is part of a church, which is part of Mount of Olives Lutheran Church, and they are gracious enough, wonderful people at Mount of Olives. If you do not have a church home, consider coming to this church. They're great people here. Um, but they've opened this, this is their youth ministry building. And this building used to be the original Mission Viejo Library. And um, so we've, we've had a great relationship with them for the last probably eight years. And um, so, yeah, uh, we're not affiliated with the church. Um, is the up room smart since it used to be a library? Ha <laughs> ha, look at how that was timed perfectly, yeah. Do you rent this space out to other churches? It, uh, I do not have any control over this, and I do think they are very, very selective about who they allow to come in here, and I'm not just saying that, I've been told that. So, um, is there a downer room in the basement? Yes, it's for the people who would die on stage. <laughs> what is your favorite hobby? Is that me, for me, I guess? Um, my favorite hobby is boating. I'm an avid boater. I love to boat. Um, who was Ron's first crush? <laughs> and why? <laughs> well, we'll let, let that one go. <laughs> My wife. 
And she's, and she's still here with me. Can you believe that? How do you spell fun? Upper room. Your favorite scripture and why? I always love the scripture out of 1 Corinthians. I don't ever get the, the designation, but it's for now. We see through a glass darkly, but then we shall see as face to face. Such hope, you know, because we'll be able to see what God was rotting through us in, in that time, you know, because we don't see it now. It's all unclear, but it'll be unveiled. And that's my favorite scripture. Have any of your uh, guests attended, appeared on America's Got Talent? I do believe some of them have. I can't tell you how many have, but I do believe some of the comedians have been on, on those. Are you having fun? Can't you tell? <laughs> how, many, how many Hollywood blockbusters have you starred in? Any Oscar wins? How many nominees before age 30? Well, truth be known, I do appear in two music videos. I do. If you look up, there's a friend, our friends have a, a, a daughter and son who have a band called Bodies, is it Bodies of Water, Kathy? Bodies of Water. And they've had me appear in two of their videos, and I've been the main star in the video. <laughs> so if you look up Bodies of Water, the band, and look for some of their videos, you might see me in there, and uh, they're kind of bizarre, but um, I just did it for them. Uh, but that's my claim to fame. How many times has Jeff Allen been to the upper room? Uh, Jeff has probably been here four times, probably four times. Where would you like to see the upper room in five years or ten years? That's a really good question. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about maybe having upper rooms in different areas. I've been encouraged to do that, and I think um, we'd like to do maybe something in Nashville if that ever works out, because there's a lot of talent out there. And, you know, we know a lot of people out there. So, um, you know, I think what, what's so unique about what we do here is the intimacy of this room. And, um, you know, it, we usually get anywhere between two to 300 people attending, depending on who's appearing. Um, but I think what makes it special is that this, it's kind of a club feel, kind of a, you know, very intimate setting. And so that's kind of what, what we really enjoy about it. Uh, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? Okay. <laughs> These are deep questions. Are the events once per month or how many times per month? One time per month, and actually every other year it's only 11 times uh, per year because we do the up New Year's Eve every other year. How many people can be seated here? Um, if you don't look at the capacity sign, <laughs> we can get uh, a little, almost 300 people in here. Ron, did you retire and then decide to invest in the upper room as your ministry? No, I have not retired. I'm a business owner. I own a company called Calico Building Services, They're based in Irvine, and um, I'm still working at it, and I've been doing it for, my wife and I started that company 32 years ago. The blessing about it has been that it's, it's afforded us to do something like this, and so God's been very gracious to us, and so we're able to help fund this and uh, along with your kind donations. And so I'm still working, so pray that I could retire someday. That'd be great. <laughs> Who would you like to have perform here that maybe we already answered that one? Why is, it, why is this called the Upper Room? I answered that one. Are there any venues other like the Upper Room? I only know one other venue in the United States, and it's in Green Bay, Wisconsin. It's called the Cup of Joy. And they do a little bit different. They do every Friday and Saturday night. They do charge for their seats. And they have local acts and so forth, but uh, they are something similar to what we're doing. Other than that, I don't think there's anyone doing anything like this. Why is the upper room downstairs? Okay, we're getting that one a lot. Is this the upper room where, where are the stairs? <laughs> okay. What are the coffee house hours here? We get that one a lot, and that's why we've, if you could see, we took, it used to say the upper room, a Christian coffee house. We took that down because we get calls and emails all the time. What are your hours? at the upper room. <laughs> the coffee house designation, how many were around during the Jesus movement? I mean, so you guys all remember the, the, the Christian coffee houses, right? Yeah, and so that was kind of what, what we referred to. The coffee's really not part of it, and it's actually not very good here. So um, <laughs> that's, so we don't have any hours. We just do an event once a month. When will you have Michael Jr. back? That is a good question. We've, we've got to reach out to him and do that. He was here, gosh, I think 
when he was just kind of coming out and, um, I, I mean, becoming popular. <laughs> you can't say anything anymore, you know what I'm saying? You've got to qualify everything. Isn't that crazy? Um, how many teams on Jeopardy Super Team? I, I, I have no idea. A place for all Christian venues. God is good. A amen to that. Yes, indeed. Did Adam and Eve have belly buttons? <laughs> that is one question that you could uh, debate for hours. Why is there leap year? Um, well, maybe we'll cover that in one of the trivia times. Um, and these are the two I couldn't understand. Negras for groups of animals. A, eh? geese, lions. Okay, well, that's... That's another one for trivia. How years, okay, New Year's Eve. All right, and then one was given to me word before. We, where do babies come from? <laughs> hey, where's the person that wrote this one? Where are you? Where are you? Are you with a young lady tonight? Yeah. Is she your wife? She is. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> I suggest maybe you guys talk, maybe afterwards, and you can kind of figure out where the babies come from. Thanks for, thanks for your questions. I hope you enjoy that time. The gentleman with the glass that gave me the glasses. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hey, uh, before we get the comedians on stage here, and I'm rushing through this, next month at the Upper Room, Maurice, are we good with that video? Watch the screens right here. Next month, said, uh, said October 19th. How many remember Terry Talbot? Yeah, one of my favorite artists back in the day. Um, he was with a group before he became a Christian. He and his brother, John Michael Talbot, uh, were in a group called Mason Prophet, a secular rock band. And believe it or not, the Eagles used to open for them. They were pretty, yeah, at, at one time. So I, uh, Terry has kind of semi-retired, and I've been after him for a few years, and he finally said, yeah, you know what, I'd like Comedy to come out Central. and, and do that. Uh, excuse me, but uh, I'm talking here. Um, so that's, Terry's a great performer, excellent songwriter, so come on out for that one. Um, your uh, little donation cards um, have a prayer request on them. If you have a prayer, please fill it out. We do pray for you, we really do. And uh, we're happy to do that. And then last but not least, as I've kind of talked about, we do this all by donation. And, uh, and I've also talked about, uh, you know, it's difficult to, to get the ends to, ends to meet, you know, when we do this. Because, uh, you know, we're not saving ch starving children here. We're not building houses in Africa. We're doing a, an event to bring joy to the body of Christ. And so I think sometimes it's hard for people to write a check to this ministry. Um, and I'm not saying that with any kind of derision or anything like that, but we do need, your, we do need your, uh, your help in making the upper room what it is in terms of being a donation-based ministry. We don't charge for the tickets because I have people telling me all the time, Ron, you need to just charge. I said, once you start charging, it's a business. It's no longer a ministry. And so I've, resent, I've, I've resisted that for 10 years. And uh, so I just trust that you folks, that God will lay on your heart to write a nice check to us uh, anywhere from whatever you can afford to whatever you can afford, any, you know, anywhere in there. So um, donation boxes are throughout the room. We'll put some out on the uh, breezeway when you're leaving, but please don't forget to, to help us out with the upper room. You guys ready to have some fun tonight? Like you haven't already, right? 
Hey, coming back for the second time uh, to the upper room, wonderful lady, would you, oh, you know what, we're going to just watch a video, right? We're going to watch the screen, Carrie Pomerelli. I'm going to leave the stage, and she's going to come up after this video. On Comedy Central, Lifetime TV, ABC Family, Oxygen Channel, and on CNN Showbiz Tonight, she talked about her faith in Hollywood. You've seen her on The Tonight Show on NBC over 25 times. Her latest book, Mom's Night Out and Other Things I Miss, was released along with the hit motion picture, Mom's Night Out. And You've seen her on Comedy Central, Lifetime TV, ABC Family, Oxygen Channel, and on CNN Showbiz Tonight, she talked about her faith in Hollywood. You've seen her on The Tonight Show on NBC over 25 times. Her latest book, Mom's Night Out and Other Things I Miss, was released along with the hit motion picture, Mom's Night Out. You know what? Let's just get started. How are you guys? Give it up for our opener, Mr. Ron. Bringing it. Bringing it like a good-looking Jimmy Kimmel. Better looking. How are you guys doing tonight? You crazy Christians coming out past 830. What's happening? What? They're like, no, we got to be home at 9 o'clock. Golden Girls is on. We got to be home. There's a Shark Tank marathon. Who's going home to watch Golden Girls? It's the weekend. That's what's happening on Lifetime. Who grew up watching Golden Girls with their grandma, with your parents? Who watches Golden Girls now and they don't look old to you? Has anyone had that happen? Like Blanche is hot. I get it. Barney Miller is a good-looking man. Ah. Uh, Thank you. You guys got that joke? That's amazing. Now I know you're my people, old people. Uh, okay, what happened to like the front? There's like six. Did Jesus rapture some people? I was like, it's a Christian coffee house, not that Christian. Uh, but I'm happy to be here. Speaking of Christian, I am one of the four Christians in, in Hollywood. And uh, thank you. Thank you. We had a meeting. And uh, six people showed up. But we like to judge people, so we voted two off. And... But a lot's been happening. I'm really excited. I got my second job writing movies for the Hallmark Network. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the women. Did you just clap? Um, are you, do you have a woman that makes you watch a Hallmark movie? Um, I know that like they can be a little predictable. I know all the dudes are like, I get it. I get it. They can be a predictable movie. But I am an edgy writer. I'm bringing something new. My partner and I are writing this movie. And it's about um, an architect girl from the big city. And she gets a call from her grandpa. And the bed and breakfast is in trouble. And so she has to come home to renovate it in time for Labor Day for the centennial. And she runs into her boyfriend. He's a lumberjack. And... Um, <laughs> played by Joey Lawrence, and it's totally different. I'm not going to tell you how it ends, but Candace Cameron's in it, and she's a princess, but I'm not going to spoil it. It's a sci-fi. There's a puppy, and um, it's really edgy. They do yoga, and speaking of yoga, I know it's a Christian show. Uh, I got to be careful about kind of talking, joking around, because I, my daughter's here with me tonight, and uh, you know, I don't like uh, kids that talk, and so um, <laughs> try to raise them not to do that. But I remember I was on an airplane with her. She had to be about four, and this lady next to us was talking to her, and she's like, what do you do? And she's like, I go to preschool. And she's like, what do you do? And the lady's like, I teach yoga. And then my daughter's like, we don't do yoga. My mommy says it's demonic. Right, Mom? <laughs> and I was like, no. So is Pilates. I don't need to put my feet in stirrups. Uh, I've already had two kids. But no, I don't like, I don't like that. And I want to talk about kids tonight because they're not here. Um, we are raising a bunch of wussies and they need to toughen up. Okay. Uh, yes. Thank you. You can clap for that. They don't know you're here. My kids don't know they're in the car. And uh, I know all the millennial moms are like, you can't leave your kids in the car. You go to jail. I know that now. And, um, Seriously, they can't even be in the car. Oh, whatever. I had an old school mom. Anybody have an old school mom? They left you in the car. Not to, yeah, to go to a movie, okay? My mom left you in the car to go to a movie. You got leather seats. You got a sunburn that says Buick on it. It's 104. You don't have an iPad. You just have a don't touch my side. Don't touch my side. How many times can you find Jesus in the clouds? I mean, that's what we would do for two hours. 
And my dad, he drove that kidnapper van with the carpeted walls and the sunset. Remember that guy giving out candy at carpool? We didn't have a computer. We had a tape deck, and all we played was ABBA because that's the only tape we had, you know? I know all the words. He had a ghetto mattress in the back. It was awesome. We didn't have seatbelts. That was for rich kids. And so my mother tells me recently that when I was a baby, and I don't know, tell me if this is true, they did not have car seats for the baby. Is this a true? Can anyone prove this? I was like, where'd you put the baby? She's like, in the back window of the station wagon, of course. <laughs> That's how you met people. You just wave and I was like, help, you know. Uh, what? I mean, seriously, but then I realized, like, we were tough. We were tough. That's because our parents made us tough. They bought us presents, like real darts. Do you remember that? <laughs> and a chemistry set to build a bomb, okay? These kids are wussies. I don't want to do another fundraiser so they can have a Nerf playground. They need to suck it up on the blacktop. They need to go on the merry-go-round wheel of death and see who makes it. <laughs> That's right. You go on the seesaw. You see who your friends are. You get your little short shorts and that metal slide with those little grates. You come home all bleeding and stuff. Toughen up, Buttercup, all right? We played educational games like Red Rover, Red Rover. I don't know what we learned from that, but it's some people skills. We didn't, have, we didn't have iPads. We didn't have cell phones. We had friends. That's what kids need to learn today. Thank you. They need to go outside and catch a firefly or whatever it was that my mother wanted me to do. Or we didn't have toys. We had a refrigerator box and a knife. That's so. We didn't go to camp. I didn't learn Spanish in the summer. My mom just handed me a sprinkler. She's like, I'll be inside watching my stories, okay? I got to heat up dinner. Those hungry men take a long time to. I'm watching General Hospital. I'm telling you, kids are just too soft, and I feel like it's, it's our fault, and they don't even know. And, and, and then, like, my daughter, she's, like, all into the video games and video systems. And I was like, we didn't have video systems. We just had a joystick, and all we did was eat some dots, okay? We bounced one dot between back and forth and back and forth between paddles for nine hours. We didn't have all your violence. We had a little frog trying to get across the street. That's all. Nobody was going to blow up his froggy family. All right, we didn't have violence. We had duck hunt, all right? Yes, yes, we, thank you. If you can touch one person with every joke. Uh, that's my goal. So I just want to get one, one person to laugh. And write it on the comment card. I laughed at 7.58. That's great. Uh, I'm just, don't, I'm glad I don't have to follow Scott Wood. He's too funny and probably offensive too. So I don't want to clean it up later. Um, I was like, let me go first. Let me go first. Somebody, yeah, I know, uh, but uh, so it's you know it's been fun. I've been traveling around the country. Um, like I said, my daughters are they're older now, so they're more. I don't like traveling with babies. I did it. I've been a comic for uh, their whole life, and this one time really rattled me. I was traveling with my oldest; she was a baby, and we traveled from Atlanta to Los Angeles, and that baby screamed from Atlanta to Los Angeles for four hours straight. And the woman next to me, what does she do when you have a mother next to you on a plane with a crying baby? What do you do? You give her dirty look. Okay, that's for the Christian, right? Thank you. And so at the end of the flight, I couldn't handle it. And I was like, okay, lady, if you're so perfect, what would you have done differently? She's like, well, first of all, I would take the baby out of the overhead. I'm like, we're going green, okay? We're in a recession. Stop being so judgy. Now, whenever I tell that joke, there's always old school mamas in the audience, and they come up to me like, you know what I do? I give the baby a little night well before the flight. <laughs> Anybody here? Anybody drug dealers? You want to raise your hand? <laughs> We're not here to judge you until you leave. Um, no, I'm just, you know, and I don't want to drug my kids. I think that's wrong. I do what my granny used to do, and I give the babies a little Jack Daniels. And... Uh, <laughs> That, we still do it at Christmas. It makes the holidays so much faster. It really does. And I love my kids. I mean, not equally, but I love them. Um, if you're here with a parent tonight, you're the one they like, okay? Or you're the one they've been neglecting for 20 years, and they're trying to make it up to you with one night of comedy and Jesus. Is that what's happening in the front row? Is that... So you are, well, who are you? Are you like the middleman, or are you the one they like? Are you the kid? What's your, whose birthday? 
It's dad's birthday, but you're not sitting next to your son. You put a person in between you. So, oh, you like the wife better? That's good when they, it's kind of good when they marry up or it's like, it's your birthday. We remembered just recently, but that's cool. You got front row and apparently you had four friends that didn't want to come, but that's cool. We love you. You're young enough to ask how old you are. How old are you? 40? Shut up! Seriously, you're 40? You've got the beard. You're very millennial looking. You've got the flip-flops. It's like, you, did you dress yourself? <laughs> oh, half the men are like, oh, you told her. Did you talk about it? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. I'm glad you got to be here. Have your parents ever remembered your birthday before? Or is this the first time? Oh, it's, oh Dad's birthday. But you're the one they like. You got invited. Are there other siblings? You invited yourself. And it's free, so it's not like they're going to pay for your ticket. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. Maybe you'll get some ice cream later. Some. I like my kids. I have an 11-year-old and a good one. And uh, the good one doesn't talk as much. And let's not pretend that we like our kids equally. I mean, like, I had a kid. I put in effort. I did everything I could to make. And then I screwed it up. And I was like, I'll start over. And that's why we have more kids. And... It's hard, though, when you have the second kid because they want things like food every day. And it's so much work to feed them. And uh, they're so demanding until we got them an iPad. And uh, that's for the other one is home watching. But uh, no, I, I feel bad for the second kids because the first kids, their birthday party is like a Ferris wheel and a quinceanera and a taco truck. And the second kid doesn't even have a scrapbook. He's like, why don't I have a scrapbook? I was like, because I tagged you on Instagram. Look at my Facebook. I love you. Look at your first birthday party. I photoshopped her on the Eiffel Tower. And uh, <laughs> I was like, it was amazing. I just feel bad. And then some of you are crazy enough to have three kids. All right. That is a bad decision. Okay. Is anybody a third kid in the packing order? Anybody a third? What are you in the second row? You're third. They don't know about you. They don't know where you are tonight, probably. Like, by the time you have a third kid, they're like, where are you going, Timmy? He's like, Tijuana. They're like, praise the Lord. Okay, do some evangelism. <laughs> Mommy's watching Shark Tank. Uh, I love my mom. I love to talk about my mother, because without her, I really didn't have an act until I had kids. And so... Um, I love my mother. She's super Christian. She's from the South. She's more Christian than all of you. She really is. Uh, she's a Presbyterian. And um, we call them the frozen chosen. And um, are you laughing because you are Presbyterians or because you know Presbyterians? You know what's really fun? Doing comedy at my mom's church because they laugh on the inside. Um, and they just nod at you. And uh, I just felt how every pastor feels. <laughs> give your pastors some love when they tell a bad joke. Pretend you like it. And, but no, my mother is, uh, she gets a solo every week in, in church. She's not in the choir and she's just anointed in her own mind. And she sings higher than everyone else around her. And you could hear her voice going, how great thou art. And you can hear the voice of God going, not so great, Barbara, not so great. Why don't you go to rehearsal instead of watching Dancing with the Stars? Now, I know some of you are probably Dancing with the Stars fans, and it's a cult. Let me tell you, it's a cult. My mother cannot be bothered on a Monday night. What are they, in season 57? I don't know. They're digging up dead people to be on Dancing with the Stars, seriously. It's crazy. And she's like, Carrie, did you know 47 million Americans voted every year in the season finale? I'm like, what? Let's let this sink in, people. Just a few years ago, we were electing elected officials. 2016, 47 million Americans voted in the finale of Dancing with the Stars. Now, the next time we elect a president, we're going to take the top two candidates and we're making them dance it out. <laughs> yes. I want to see Bernie and Trump do a samba, okay? Yes. See, Ron, that's my edgy material. Uh, not because it's dirty, just because I'm coming out of the closet as a conservative. And you can't do that. Like, you could be Christian all day long, right? And then you're like, I'm a conservative. They're like, boom, they shoot you. It's horrible. It's horrible. Except in Texas. But... Um, I love Texas. But uh, I do have a special treat. I think my... Lori, is she back there? Is my daughter back there? Is she? Yes, no, maybe. Where is she? Is she here in the audience? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, literally. No, I took her out. I was like, come on at 805. Lucy, can you, can, I want to bring my daughter to say hello to you. Um, thank you. 
I have a reason for doing this. It's a tax write-off, and um, she uh, hates it when she, I bring her on stage. My mommy needs to make a living. And um, you guys, all the proceeds, I know that Ron does not take donations, and I have product out there, and I'm going to be honest, like he's, his does not go to charity, but mine does. 100% of my proceeds go to charity. Feed the children, my children. And... Um, <laughs> I mean, turn around. She's really hungry. I mean, look at her. She's just, she's, uh, she's got to get some meat on her bones. So, and my children's dental plan is chew on the other side. Because um, their father's also a comedian. So if you want to give, dig deep tonight. And I told Lucy that uh, I would have her come on stage. And if I was uh, really nice, that she would sing a little bit. And then that would make her... Like, work. could you give her a little bit of encouragement? Could you give her? See, they love you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I did that. I did that. <laughs> now for my next number, I would like to do. Thank you. And I told Lucy, um, so if you see her out back after the show, uh, okay, I'll let you go sit down. I won't embarrass you anymore. But her best friend moved to Puerto Rico and um, airplane tickets are expensive. And she's like, can I do a GoFundMe like all my friends? I'm like, no, get a job, get a job. And so I'm really proud of her because she took duct tape and she started to make little pens. So if you buy a pen, you feed a child and you send her to Puerto Rico, not on a mission trip, just because I need a break. I, um, I'm a single mom. Are there any single parents here tonight? Of course not. They're home raising their kids. There's one. Um, but support single parents because uh, we don't have a lot to live for except we have our own Netflix. And that is... People are like, are you ever going to date again? No, I like control of my own TV. And I'm getting to a point, if I ever went online, the only guys that would write me are like, they have profiles like, see you next Tuesday. I'm like, you're not going to live that long. And... Uh, but my mother's like, you should really think about marrying for old money, Carrie. And because the first time I married for love, and we all know that's stupid. And no, I did. I married a comedian with no car. That's not okay. Um, so the next time, if I ever were to date, I don't really need to, you know, spend time with you because when I get married, I won't see you. But um, I just want to be like, what's your credit score and do you snore? That's what matters. <laughs> see, all the married people get that joke. And all the single bed. People are like, that's sad. That's sad. Speaking of single, my best friend Lori's here tonight, and she's single, and she's in the back room, and she's Christian, and she loves long walks on the beach, and she has a really good job with benefits. So, um, <laughs> I mean, seriously, like legit pension, all the whole thing. She's in healthcare, like free advice. Uh, yeah, my mom just wants me to marry a doctor so she can get pills. Like, that is scary. And I got to tell you something, and I don't like to do jokes about me being old, and I don't want to get, I don't want to say that, but like, I, things are a little different. Like when I was 25, I would wake up and be like, I'm going to go mountain climbing today. And now I wake up and I hurt all over. And I don't like that feeling of, I'm turning into my mother and my friends and I, we talk about our body parts that are not working so well. And then we talk about our doctors, like they're drug dealers. Do you know what I mean? Have you ever had that company? Well, you got to go see my guy. He's amazing. Yeah. You got to use the back door. Tell him I sent you. He doesn't take insurance. He's worth it. He's totally worth it. And I can blame anything on my health. I went like, you know what? I'm not fat. It's a thyroid problem. Okay. Just leave me alone. Yes. Put that on a t-shirt. Uh, 
But uh, anybody have these oils, friends? The oils, do you have any oils people there? Yes, they can cure it all, can't they? They will cure it all. They will cure leprosy and whatever it is that you got going on with the little oils, all right? And I'm not saying they're wrong. It's just a little much. I have this one friend, Angela, and I was like, Angela, I can't have lunch with you. I have a cold. She's like, no, you don't, sweetie. You got to do what I do. I had a cold this morning. I'll tell you what I did. I took a little lavender, put it behind my ears. I took a little sage. I put it under my nose, and then I snorted three lines of cocaine, and I... I, I feel amazing. <laughs> Praise Jesus. At least it's not CBD. And I'm getting a point. I'm getting to a point in my weight loss journey. If you offer me heroin, I will do it. Has anyone gotten to that point where you're like, I don't want to lose weight. And now I'm not losing weight, so I'm just decorating it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, just flow it out. Just shop at Chico's like my mother. Just get it. You know what I'm saying? Chico's gets it done. I'm not going to Forever 21. Nothing about me fits at Forever 21. Maybe the earrings. That's it. I didn't think Talbot's was good, but I walked in there. Look at me. I'm dressed like a prophet. It's amazing. I can wear whatever I want. God, I'm, I'm, like, I'm not wearing high heels. I'm in Skechers memory foam. It's all good. Um, they're like, I wonder why she's single. That's weird. Uh, I don't want to date. I'd have to bathe and everything. It's awful. All the married people are like, no, you don't know. That's what happens when you're married. <laughs> you just give up completely. <laughs> Remember in my 20s when I used to try, but no, not anymore. Uh, but um, so I have some exciting news. I, I've written a couple books, and I have some books with me tonight. And I have two new books coming out. But first of all, do you guys remember the movie Not Mom's Night Out that came out a few years ago? I wrote the book that went with that, and it's called Mom's Night Out and Other Things I Miss, and it came out with the movie, and it's a devotional for moms, and they're like, what kind of book would a, a comedian write? Is it like Beth Moore or Priscilla Shire or the Bible? No, not at all. Not like any of those things. Um, it's one page at a time, because if you're a mom, you usually only have about one page worth in the bathroom, and that's where you're reading your devotions. And you know some of you moms are moms of toddlers, and you don't know what it's like to even shave both legs. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're in the shower, there's a little Freddy Krueger going, what are you doing? What are you doing? And they just get in the shower, and you're like, all right, call it a bath. It's Tuesday. This book is for you. If you're the mom that has matching Tupperware and a Pinterest page, you're not going to like this book, okay? But if your kid has ever eaten an entire bottle of gummy bears and their Flintstone vitamins and they survived to tell about it, and Poison Control knows you, that's my people. If you eat Nutella in the shower alone with a fork, and you've eaten an entire basket of Halloween candy while your kids are sleeping. This is the book for you. Um, I can't see you, but I, I, I want to give one away. So just like yell or raise your hand or something if you want a free book. All right. Front row, front row, Christian. Are you a mom? No, it's for my daughter. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. There's some kids in a second generation, whatever. Um, so um, one of my favorite things is catching my mother in sin. And so... Um, it, come on, we love it. So she was talking to her friend about her friend's issues, and I busted her, and I said, Mommy, you can't do that. You're Christian. We don't talk. You can't do that. She said, No, baby, that's where you're wrong. We don't have issues. We're Christians. We have prayer requests. <laughs> and I was like, You need therapy. She's like, No, I don't. That's why I have small group, okay? <laughs> so this shirt says, Remember, it's not gossip if your head is bowed. Yeah, you want it? You want it? What's your name? Sharon. Sharon. You struggle a little bit with gossip because you got really excited about that joke. I'm not saying My head is your head is bad. It's not gossip if it's true. Also, um... So my mother's pretty cool. My father and my mother are veterans. And I want to give a round of applause to all the people. You know why? Because you fought for me to tell bad jokes. And so if you don't like it, <laughs> you did this. But my mother at the ripe old age of 24 was raised in Montgomery, Alabama, and she went off on a warship called the USS Repose to Vietnam. Now, I don't know if they told her it was like a cruise or something, because if you met my mother, you would know she wouldn't do that on purpose, but, um, and you can't get off, you know? So <laughs> apparently she was a nurse. And so she was engaged to my father. It was very cute. It's like kind of like Top Gun. He was a Navy flyer. And um, 
they uh, did this crazy thing where they wrote a letter. They would write, like they took a pen and then they would write things on it and then they would put it in an envelope. Lucy, you should listen to this. And then they would, I don't know, like magic. And so there was no emails, but they wrote letters for a year. And so this is her diary called The Diary of a Red Cross Worker. And all of the proceeds for this book go to her Presbyterian gambling ministry. And um, <laughs> we're very proud of her. We're very proud of her. Um, and, uh, so I'm kind of excited because I have a new book coming out and it's taken me years to get somebody to agree to publish it. But the book, the basis of the book is I wanted to be the best Christian woman I can. I'm really, you know, cause I want to impress people. And so I went to my pastor and I said, how do I be a Christian woman? How can I be the best Christian woman? He said, well, then you want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. Has anyone ever heard of that? It's like a chapter in the Bible. Yeah, okay, so I read it. I read the whole thing. And let me be honest with you, it didn't speak to me. And you guys get it. You're from Orange County. We don't plow. And I mean, we've never been in a field. I mean, what are we going to count? Ikea tent sale? So I am not Proverbs 31. It's like she gathers her food from afar. I was like, that is takeout, right? That is takeout. So I never was a Proverbs 31 woman. I have always been a Proverbs 32 woman. So my book is called Confessions of the Proverbs 32 Woman. She rises late and her kids make her breakfast. I don't know who you are, but you can have it. I don't even know if you're, okay, yes, you're a person, maybe a woman. I don't know. Okay, so you can have it. But um, so you guys... The book isn't out yet, but I am really excited because I have a couple like um, bootleg copies. Like we made them on a photocopy machine. And, um, we're selling them out of my van, but I have a couple. It's called Confessions of the Proverbs 32 Woman, hashtag hot mess for Jesus. And it is not even on sale yet. So does anybody want like a bootleg copy in the third row? You come get it later. Uh, yeah, so... And then I want to give this out. This is a DVD. It's called How to Be a Pit Bull for Jesus. And I really believe that sometimes we got to get in our inner pit bull. And if we still believe that God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I've been going around the country doing Christian comedy and telling jokes. And then all of a sudden, you know how the devil comes to your door and he doesn't ring the doorbell and he tries to attack you. And I give birth to this really cute little baby. And she was rushed off to a place called the NICU. And sometimes you become a member of a club that you don't want to be a member of. I became a NICU mom. And if there's any NICU parents, that's Neo Intensive Care Unit. It's not where you want to be, okay? I ended up spending a long time there and I ended up having a lot of doctors tell me a lot of things about that kid. They said she wasn't going to walk. They said she was going to have leg braces. They said she was going to have brain damage, mental instability, you name it. And they said it. And she had a heart problem and she was hooked up to all these wires. And the first time I laid eyes on that baby, I looked at her with a mother's love and I said, honey, you're going to ruin the pictures. And um, <laughs> she looked like Tron. And ah. Uh, Thank you, old people. And, and then she was fat, and she had an Audi, and I was like, you're never doing pageants. And I mean, I liked her, but if you've ever given birth to a baby, you're like, not a fan. And um, I mean, really, I had fat babies. That Lucy, she was 10.8 pounds, OK? 10.6, 10.8. She looked like a pig that you would roast at a wedding. You know one of those little pig? She was half Korean, half Irish. At least I knew she would get into a good college because she's 118th Native American. And so, but she was so big when she, she was so big at birth, she drove home. It was crazy. The doctor was like, don't breastfeed her, just get her a pizza. And um, I mean, I, you, you don't even get a prize for big babies. You know, I was like, this. but so I give the, another fat baby and she's in the NICU and she's struggling to survive. And I only can make jokes about it because some of you just got to laugh at the devil because he's so stupid. And I just was at my wits end and I was on the floor. And you know, when you're on the floor and you're doing that ugly cry and you're like, <clears throat> and then you find M&Ms under the couch and it's like, yes, I knew you were there for me, Jesus. And... <laughs> And then, you know, you hit your low point and you're just going to run. And I ran away from home and I was so frustrated. And I made it to the end of the driveway and I was like, oh, I don't work out. And so um, I was like, Lord, I feel like I've made my point. Um, and they dragged me back home. But I, 
was struggling with this one because they were using words like incurable and they were using words like mentally disabled and it was just so hard because I was like this is not my life I am serving you I'm going around the country I'm preaching I'm, I'm telling God how you know God people how good you are and how could this be happening to me and I could pray it off of somebody else but this is my kid and what am I going to do when it's my kid and that is when the body of Christ came around me I had these crazy Christian people that believed in the Bible as real and they they came to me in the hospital and they said we are praying for this baby her name was Ruby Joy and her destiny is not what those doctors say and we found a verse in the Bible because sometimes when you're going through it you just got to find a verse you got to find one verse and I don't care what they say on Facebook I don't care what the naysayers say I don't care haters back off I got one verse and that verse was Psalm 103 and Psalm 103 said the Lord has healed all of my diseases all of my diseases he said that there was no parentheses and let me just tell you how crazy the devil is right before this happened my mother gets diagnosed with breast cancer and I was like you uh-uh not today Satan not today and I remember just my world is crashing around me it's so bad and I had this moment and God was like who are you and I was like what and I was in my bedroom and I'd been crying and I wasn't up to praying and I just couldn't handle it and that's okay because there's grace, but you got to have that moment. And he said, are you the pit bull? Are you that pit bull that I created to you? You've been fighting battles your whole life. You better get up and you better go fight for your daughter because you meet me and I meet you and let's work together. And I got up and I had this moment and I promise you it was so real. And I looked in the mirror and I said, Satan, you have messed with the wrong mama because now I'm awake and now I'm mad and I'm a weapon of mass destruction and I'm gonna pray for my baby and every baby and every person in that hospital. And you better get her out of there because I'm gonna not quit praying until I get what the Lord told me I'm gonna have. And I walked in that lobby of UCLA hospital and I prayed for some guy in the lobby and I grabbed him he's like I'm not sick I was like I don't care I mean I was like boom I was like an Avenger you know I was like for Jesus and I was like praying for everybody and I told the doctor I said I know you say that this is a lifelong diagnosis I know you say there's no cure but let's leave room for God you do your job I do my job let's leave room for God she had a life-threatening heart problem and then it healed itself they didn't know why her heart healed and I said cuz God healed it she didn't have to have the heart surgery God did the heart surgery she went home with oxygen and I said Satan you're not gonna win this one I'm gonna take her to every prayer meeting I'm gonna take her to everything and I'm not gonna let an oxygen take and when I get this oxygen offer I'm throwing it in the garbage and I'm putting your name on it so six months into her life not 18 years like they said six months I go into UCLA cardiology they come back with the latest x-rays dr. Ishander who I don't think at the point in her life was a believer and she walked in and she said well your Jesus did it and I said what she said I can't find anything wrong with her lungs I can't find anything wrong with her heart it's gone and that was strike one for the home team and we've been on this journey for eight years and when it was time for that baby to walk she walked when it was time for that baby to talk she talked when it was time for that baby to go to school she went to school they said she would never go to regular school guess who made the honor roll five times my kid she's so healed she got in trouble for climbing on top of the boys bathroom last year and I said that's not her fault we shop at Target and and she climbed all the way up on top in her cowboy boots. I'm like, they said she was never going to walk. I think she's a champion, okay? And I'm not saying that my kid's better than everyone, but kind of. But uh, who needs this? Who needs a little miracle? Who needs a little? Yeah, you want it? Come, yeah, I'll give it to you. Yeah, you? Okay, hold on. Um, oh, and um, happy birthday for you. Yeah, for somebody. You clapped really hard for that veteran thing, so I'm, yeah. Is it your birthday? But then you're 40. But you just happen to be 40. It's not your birthday. I mean, here, have a comment card. That's for you. That's. I'm going to sign it. I'm going to sign it, though. Because they're selling my autograph on eBay right now for $2.99. And um, you think I'm kidding? Look it up. Who do you think's bidding on it? My mother. And uh, she has driven it up to $2.99, and the shipping is 6 bucks. So I'm... Um, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. My career is really crushing it. And uh, 
But no, I, um, I, you know, it's funny because my kids, I, they're growing up and they love to spend time with their, with their um, grandparents, but it wasn't a good decision for me when I was trying to raise a healthy, organic California kid with no sugar and no TV, and I did the stupidest thing I could ever do with a two-year-old. I sent her for the weekend at Grandma and Grandpa's house. Now, every parent knows that that is a bad decision, all right? And I know there's grandparents here, and you're clapping for that, and you're like, give me the baby, give me the baby. You know why you want the baby? I know why you want the baby. You want to pay your kids back for the teenage years, don't you? You want that baby. You want to ruin two years of parenting in 24 hours, right? You will do it up. You will feed, a, you will feed an 18-month-old Coca-Cola to settle her stomach, okay? My father was giving my two-year-old orange day. I'm like, oranges are very delicious. Orange day. She's like, no, we had Cheetos, we had Doritos, we had Fago, we had orange pop. I was like, okay. She was feeding my kid cupcakes after, before dinner. The kid was so sugared up, and she's like, Nana loves you. Mommy doesn't love you like Nana does. Put him in your pocket. You're going home, okay? Remember, when Mommy says go to sleep, what do you say? No, no, no. You just eat a cupcake and tell her Nana said so. She comes back to my organic house like she's a crack addict in rehab. She didn't know her name, okay? We're at the bank. I pull out my M&M's, Mommy's Medicine. She's like, I need it. That's candy. That's candy. Nana says, give it to me now. And I was like, no, I need it, you little whippersnapper. And just like all of our churches, they asked us to leave. And um, <laughs> I go home and I put her in timeout because I'm a timeout mom. It's one minute of timeout for every minute she's been alive. And... Uh, because you guys, I don't believe in spanking your kids in public um, where you can get caught. I don't think that's legal anymore. And I never would have spanked her when she was a baby. I really wouldn't. I loved her. And I had this pastor. They had five perfect kids. I said, what do you do? She's like, we don't spank our kids. We use a wooden spoon. It's not us doing the spanking. It's the spoon. And that holds up in a court of law. And... But when she was a baby, I never would have spanked her. And then she turned about, you know, three or whatever. And I remember she took white um, kitchen cabinets and decided to paint them with my black mascara, okay? And she's no Picasso. Nobody's buying that on eBay, okay? So she paints all over, and I lose it, and I turn it into my mother. Has anyone that moment, you turn into your mother, you turn into your father, and I just looked at her, and I said, I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too! You know, and she takes off running. And I just went to grab a spoon. I wasn't going to hit her. I was just going to chase her around until she had issues as a grown-up. And so... Um, so anyway, she goes and takes off running, and I couldn't grab a spoon. All I could grab was a cake spreader for icing, you know. And she's like, that's for cooking, that's for cooking. And then her dad was like, how do you know? Nobody cooks in this house, you know. <laughs> and that's when he died. And so um, <laughs> she's in preschool the next day, and she's like, I love you, Mommy. Will you promise not to hit me with a knife again? <laughs> See, I told you I don't like kids that talk. Uh, I was like, Mommy's going away for a long time. She's like, back to prison where you met my daddy. So um, I was gone for like two years, but it was good. I learned crafts. Um, moms of young children were like, prison, not so bad. Uh, I would sleep. I would sleep more. But you guys have been so much fun. And before I get out of here, I want to give honor to my Italian father. I love him. He is just the love of my life. And I love being raised by an Italian Catholic father. Do I have any Italians here? One guy, with, everyone's in witness protection. They're like, we can't. You're Italian? Who, who said they're Italian? Raise your hand. You get it. So you know how you raise kids when you have an Italian dad? Guilt and intimidation, right? Like, you're going to die. And so... That's how he raised us, which I think is missing in today's child raising. Because we had three rules with my Italian dad from Detroit, right? One rule, you drink, you die. You do drugs, you die. Three, you kiss a boy or come even close to it. Not only will you die, you will burn in the eternal fires of hell forever and ever and ever. Now preschool is going to be great, okay? 
And this is how you put your kids to bed. You lie to them. That's how you put your kids to bed. That's how he put me to bed. That's how I put my kids to bed. I said, go to sleep. Go to sleep. Mommy loves you. Jesus loves you. And remember, don't you even think about getting out of that bed. Because if you do, there's a big hairy monster and he lives under your bed. He's going to come up and tear you limb from limb. Oh, you don't believe me? What do you think happened to your brother? You don't have one, do you? Thank you guys so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you guys. Terry Pomerelli, everybody. Give her a hand. Very funny lady. Are we on this one, Tony? Okay, here we are. Thanks, Carrie. What a great... She's a funny person, isn't she? Very funny. Hey, if you haven't had a chance to go on to um, our website and see every... We started this back in November. I've, I've been doing interviews with all the guests. We call it Backstage at the Upper Room. We do it on the stage. I don't know why we call it Backstage, but it's before the event. But usually it takes... Uh, Frank back there, who's doing our live streaming, edits them, and we get them out about a week later. So always watch. So I interviewed uh, both uh, Carrie and um, Scott tonight. So that's called Backstage at the Upper Room. Also, you know, we, we talk, I talked to you a little bit about this being our anniversary. We are also in the process of putting together, we're going to do an a anniversary celebration maybe next month or the month after. I'm not sure. We just couldn't quite get it together this month. But we got a lot of um, greetings from... Uh, some of the people that have paid, played here in the past, uh, gosh, we got, well, 21 of them, people that have sent us little videos, um, you know, congratulating us, and we're going to put a little montage of that together. That's going to be fun, and we'll, we'll serve up some cake or something like that. Um, yeah, fun, huh? So, you guys having fun? Yes. Stand up just real quick, stretch your, get your blood flowing. And, um, don't talk, because once you start talking, then I can't get you to sit down again. Yeah, so, okay, you get the blood flowing, you know. The seats aren't the most comfortable in the world, are they? <laughs> All right. Feeling good? Yeah. All right, sit down now. <laughs> We're going to continue with some fun tonight. Uh, we had uh, Scott here a couple of years ago, I think, and he's a very funny man. He's known as Mr. Punchline, and uh, he's going to probably talk to you, I'm sure, about a little TV thing that he's putting together, and we talked about it on the interview tonight. But would you please welcome to the Upper Room stage, Mr. Scott Wood. All right, is this on? Can you hear me? One more time for Carrie Pomerelli. Very funny. Come on, Carrie. It's like a swap meet up here. Who knows what's going on? Good. You guys are looking at me, you're like, hey, look, John Elway and Gary Busey had a baby. Look at that guy. <laughs> good to be, oh, good, the blonde got a joke. That's exciting. <laughs> I'm joking, she's not a real blonde. But anyway, what a crowd. Mission Viejo, the gateway to Laguna Niguel. I'm excited. <laughs> My career is skyrocketing. Next week, Barstow. Who knows, Barstow. Have you been to Barstow? You see the people in Barstow? Missing teeth, beards down to here, and that's the women. It's nuts, people. It's good to be out, man. I just did a show in Palm Springs. Been to Palm Springs lately? What happened to Palm Springs? Palm Springs is like the gay 90s. You're either gay or in your 90s. Am I right? And the old folks love me in Palm Springs, man. I'm telling you. I did a show at a nursing home. There wasn't a dry seat in the house. I'll tell you that. <laughs> One guy laughed so hard he went his wife's parents. Am I right? This, this guy knows what I'm talking about up front. Am I right, sir? It's an older crowd. Who are we fooling? It's a Palm Springs crowd. Who still has their prostate? Raise it up. Let's go. Let's find out. Oh, my God. Two women raised their hands. Can you believe that? What kind of a show is this? It's good to be here. I did a show in Arkansas. I'm just glad to be back in the States. I'll be honest with you. Those people are backwards. This guy says, hey, Scott, if I divorce my wife, is she still my sister? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was serious. I looked him right in the eye. I'm like, look, Dad, what are you doing? <laughs> what a crowd. What a night. She's just getting here. Hello, how are you? Can I get you something like a watch for crying out loud? What's going on? <laughs> what, you got to go TT while I'm on or what's happening? 
Quick boo-boo break there, lady. What's happening? I'm married. You guys married over here? I've been married for over 20 years, been happy for two. So that's exciting. I know, right? I met my wife on that Christian uh, dating site, the Craigslist. Anybody do that one, the Craigslist? I'm joking. My wife's classy. It was eBay, actually. eBay. I was the highest bidder. I like being married. My wife's African-American, beautiful woman of color, and I do what she says because black wives matter. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> she will cut me. I ain't lying, people. She is fine, but deadly. Anyway, yes, I, uh, all of our friends are mixed. We got a friend who's Jewish. His wife is Japanese. They named their daughter Sosumi. So that's exciting. <laughs> These are the jokes. Let it out. It's a big night. I'm in Mission Viejo. I don't know. But I love being married. You married, sir, or single? Okay, there you go. It took you a second, sir. Oh, my God. This guy's looking at me like a lava lamp. How are you, sir? Thanks for dressing up with the short shorts, for crying out loud. I, I can tell what religion he is. But anyway, what a night. How? Oh, yeah, I'm wrong. You're laughing. Shut up, people. What a night. I'm killing. I should have asked for more money. But anyway... My parents are cousins. That's what's my problem anyway. What's your name, sir? He's looking down. You, what's, is there something more important on the ground, sir? Okay, you from Barstow? What's happening, sir? Look at you. Is this the lovely wife? How many years married? Seven. There you go. You answered together. Look at you. Seven. How cute. Still got that new car smell. Nothing. You're nothing, people. My wife and I forget about it. Seven years. You ever, did you Google the word engage? Look up the word engage in the dictionary. It says to do battle with the enemy. Did you know that? That's what it says. Then go Google mother-in-law. It says see engage. Did you know that? My mother-in-law lives with us. So forget about walking around the house in your little tidy whities right, dude? And I told her, too. I said, Mom, put some pants on. What are you doing? That is nasty. You're scaring the cat. We don't even have a cat lady. How are you? She's looking at me like an aquarium. How are you, dear? You single lady there? Single? Yeah, stay single. Your pockets will jingle. Am I right? When are, you, are you single, dude? You got money, right? Okay, yeah, I'm telling you. More than me. I got a wife and kids. Stay single. Your pockets will jingle. That's my money motto. When I was single, I had money. I could take my girlfriend out. Now that I'm married with kids, I don't got enough money to take my girlfriend out. It's nuts. <laughs> the wife gets it all. Am I right, dude? My wife spends money like water, too. Even our towels are name brand. Sheraton, Ramada. It's nuts, people. <laughs> you ever stay in a nice hotel? No matter how nice the hotel is, the bar of soap is still the size of a nickel in a shower. Am I right? Are you like me? I'm in there. I'm washing my butt. I lost it. You ever done that? <laughs> I had a bar of soap here a second ago. What happened? <laughs> then when you have gas, you blow bubbles. Am I right, people? It's like the Lawrence Welk show in your room. And this is a Lawrence Welk show crowd right here. Don't act like I don't know. The shuttle from Palm Springs is on the way, lady. Relax. Anyway, so I've been married seven years. You have a little fight with the wife every now and then or something like that? Yeah, right, every once in a while. 20, almost 30 years with the missus, I'm telling you. My wife and I, we had a little fight today, believe it or not. I call it a little fight. They worded it differently on the police report. You know what I'm saying? I close my eyes to take a nap. She starts yelling at me, watch the road, right? <laughs> she hates the way I drive. She keeps telling me, you're going to hit someone, you're going to hit someone. And I'm like, in about a minute. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm afraid of my wife. Please, people. She likes to DVR how to get away with murder. The woman's deadly. Anyway, so little fights with the wife. It's always something. My wife hates the way I dress, too. Can you believe that? She's like, look at you, nothing matches. Hurt my feelings. I was naked. It was nuts. <laughs> it's always the little things. Am I right, dude? Come on. My wife says, you can laugh in the bedroom, just don't point. That's what my wife says. We saw that movie about sex after 50. Frozen? Anybody seen that thing? These are the jokes, people. Let it out. It's a big night. What am I, Aladdin? Look at this carpet. What's the heck? Will Smith coming out later? What's going on? Anyway, you guys are fun. Thanks for laughing. Which joke did you just get? Look at you. You're still going. She's like, oh, I get it. John Elway and Gary Busey. 
This guy's hilarious. Try to catch up, lady. She's drunk. But anyway, listen. You guys are fun. I did a show last week. They were so drunk, they didn't even know I was there. Can you believe that? That was a weird church. I'll be honest with you, people. <laughs> it's a Catholic church in Vegas. Anyone been to that one? On the strip, Our Lady of the Designated Driver. Anyone go to that one? I don't know if we have any Catholic people here, man. You've got to be in shape to be Catholic. I went to a Catholic church service the whole hour. Stand, sit, kneel, stand, kneel, sit. I was winded. <laughs> I told the priest, do you have a low-impact mass? Do you have that? <laughs> you blow out the candles. I'm out of breath, dude. <laughs> I came to church to avoid the burn, for crying out loud. Those crazy Catholics. You go to confession, you tell the priest, you first. Anyway. <laughs> oh, shut up. Anyway, listen. <laughs> They're looking for leads. But anyway, what a night. Well, help them donate so they can finish the roof. <laughs> we have rats. Anyway, what was I talking about? My wife, man. Where'd you guys meet? Santa? San Clemente? San Clemente? Where? Right, right. She's saying it's something else. I would listen to her, dude. <laughs> Women have all the power. Relax. God, you have no idea, right? Okay. Breathe in, breathe. Are you like me? You're waiting for the meds to kick in. Am I right, sir? I don't suffer from mental illness. I enjoy it. Okay, people? Well, my wife is crazy, though. I know that, man. We're car shopping, too. What kind of car you got? A mini? Yeah, there you go. You got the kids and all that? Is that why? No, just, okay, just got a mini. Just the two of us. All right. That's sad. But anyway, listen. Man, my car's a piece of junk, though. My car smells like beer. I got the Toyota Corona. Anybody got that one? Where's your lime on the window? I'm always crashing, dude. Name of the car tells you all about the car, like the infinity. That's how long it takes you to pay it off. Have you seen that, sucker? Last week, I hit some dude. Psh, I didn't see him. He was in a mirage. <laughs> I told him, you should have been in a Dodge. <laughs> yeah, buddy. And there's no way I'm going to sit inside a probe. I'll tell you that, lady. <laughs> lady! Oh, good, I found the level of the audience. That's exciting. <laughs> now I know why you love you, because you people are sick. Sick people. Yeah, man. How about the neon? You seen the neon? That's a small car you get in. You got your knee on the dash, your knee on the window. It's a clown car. Out of my way. <laughs> I'm a honky. Relax, people. That's my wife. She can get into Cracker Barrel because she knows me. But anyway, listen, people. You guys are fun. These are the jokes. Anyway. The smart car. You seen the smart car? That's a tiny car. That smart car. Oh, my holy smokes. It's a football helmet with wheels. Am I right? <laughs> who's you know who's driving the smart car? Morons. Am I right? It's a football helmet with wheels. That's what it is. I'm telling my nephew got, my nephew got a smart car. It was in his Happy Meal. It was crazy. <laughs> People drive crazy. Do you drive crazy on the road, lady, or are you a good driver? Both, okay. A little crazy. Okay, you look a little crazy. I'll be honest with you. I'm just kidding. But people drive nuts, right? I'm telling you. You could be doing 90 miles an hour. It's still not fast enough. They're flying by you. I'm doing 90 on the way out here. I think it's on the 5 freeway or whatever. This guy's this close to my back bumper yelling at me, honking his horn, flashing his badge. Right? I'm like, go around. Go around. You're, you're clear. <laughs> the cops are crazy, right, lady? And they pull you over, ask you questions. You know why I pulled you over? I told the cop, you don't know either, huh? What's going on? I'm late. Cop said to me last week, your eyes are red. You've been drinking. I'm, I said, your eyes are glazed. You've been eating donuts? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> don't do that, dude. Don't. I'm telling you, those taser guns hurt, brother. I ain't lying. But now I can salsa, so I'm excited about that. The cops and the police, you're doing your job. God bless you, but don't ask us any questions. The cops, the cop tried to give me a ticket for an illegal U-turn. I said, I didn't even want to turn. The sign said, no U-turn. <laughs> so anyway, I'm sitting in jail, and um, 
but it's good to see my mom again, bro. Am I right, bro? Look at you with the, what is that, the Lincoln? What do you got going there? The, the mustache people are on their way. Don't worry, sir. They're loving me over here. Look at you. The meds have totally kicked in. I don't know, man. But people do weird stuff. Do you do weird stuff in, in your car? People do everything in their car. I saw a guy shaving in his car. You ever seen that? I mean, he had his leg out the window with the razor and all that. But enough about Ron. Listen, people, I'm telling you. The guy's silky smooth. He's nuts, man. I saw a lady. She was, uh, she was, so, she was knitting. That's what she was doing with the big... She was knitting, crocheting, whatever. I, I kid you not, with the knitting needles while she's driving all over the road, she almost hit me. I'm yelling at her, pull over, pull over. She yells back, no, it's a scarf, right? <laughs> Dude, I thought it was a pullover. What do I know? <laughs> People drive crazy, right? It's too much when I'm on the road, though. I see a lot of weird things, though. What are you, what are you driving? Do you have a nice car, sir? It's an old car. It's an old car? Yeah, old cars are nice, though, man. Yeah. You got, you got pets too at home? Anybody? No pets? Yeah, I got pets. We got a dog. Because we got kids. So I got a new dog for Christmas. I didn't want the dog. The dog, I hate the dog. That's what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm saying? Our dog's Jewish too. Just found out. He's Jewish. Someone rang our doorbell. We hear, oi, 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 We're closed. <laughs> the dog is nuts. Our dog bit the neighbor kid. Then the city says we have to put him to sleep. I said, that's fine with me. I don't even like that kid. <laughs> Here's a pillow. Tell him I said night nights for crying out loud. Dogs are nuts, man. Wherever we go, the dog has to go with us on car trips, too. I'm driving. It's a small dog, so the dog's sitting on my wife's lap. I roll down her window. Out goes the head, the tongue, the ears. Then the dog wants to do it. <laughs> the wacky dog. I don't know, man. I ran over the neighbor's cat, too. I feel horrible. It took me three tries. Anybody? <laughs> They're quick. <laughs> I'm joking. That's a joke. It was two tries. Two tries only. And those hairless ones stick to the tire. Am I right, brother? <laughs> Not a cat person. Oh, you must be a cat person. Well, whatever. <laughs> My sister said cats always land on their feet. And I'm thinking you're not throwing it against the wall hard enough. How about that? <laughs> That's why there's that tail. Am I right, lady? Come on. <laughs> I'm joking. I love cats. They're delicious. But anyway, listen. No, I got a house sit for my sister, too, and watch her stupid cat. She's on vacation. She calls me up two days into the trip. Can you give the cat a bath? Oh, my gosh. So I dug him up. <laughs> he was filthy, too. He needed a bath. Killed a huge mouse last week. Now they won't let me back into Disneyland. That stinks. <laughs> he started it. <laughs> Anyway, I killed a bird, too, with a BB gun. You ever do that when you were a kid? Thinking there's that little bird lying dead at the bottom of the cage? It's nuts, people. It's too much, man. So seven years, you got kids? No, not yet? Dogs? They're fur babies, right? Yeah, there you go. I should have just stuck with the dog, man. We got kids, too. They're sucking us dry, man. Our daughter's out of the house for her 18th birthday on the inside of our house. We gift wrapped the front door. Anyone do that? Open it up, sweetie. Rip her open. Look, we've given you the world. Look at that. <laughs> and we packed your bags. You're welcome. They're so ungrateful. My son, I still got, I got a little one at home, my son. He loves dinosaurs, so I let him visit my parents. <laughs> ah, they're getting old, please. We're all getting old. You guys are old. Relax, people. The shuttle's coming. Don't worry. I'm old. I'm in my late 40s. I'm 58. <laughs> my dad just turned 95. We're pretty excited about that. Yeah, 95 in June. Went to a birthday party. Hey, I'm messing with my dad. I said, 95, you could go tomorrow. He said, I hope so. I haven't gone today. I'll tell you that. So <laughs> I don't need to know that, Dad. Man's trying to buy a bowel for crying out loud. <laughs> it's a little personal there, isn't it? Remember the older your dad got, the higher the pants kept coming up to every 10 years? Waist, chest, neck. 
creepy crawly parents. My dad's 95. His belt's a headband. It's nuts. <laughs> He's got to unzip his fly to sneeze, people. <laughs> 95, man. And he drives, too. That scares me. My dad's 95. This is true, bro. And he still drives. Man's got a bifocal windshield. It's nuts. <laughs> He calls me up yesterday. I hit a couple of mailboxes. I said, where's the car, Dad? Where's the car? He said, inside the post office. <laughs> where's Mom? She got out to get stamps. Get out of there. Put it in an R and get out. Did you get along with your dad, bro, when you were growing up? Yeah. You did good for you, man. Not me. My dad, man, because it's a broken family and all that. Just ugly, ugly. He'd tuck me in bed at night, read me some Stephen King. You got a dad like that? Look, this one has a clown on it. <laughs> My dad was a big drinker, too, half Irish and all scotch. It was nuts, people. His urine sample had an olive in it. Can you believe that? I'll do the joke again for this side. <laughs> this ones that are turning up the little hearing thing in the ear. I said, his urine sample had an olive in it, people. Not getting the love from this side. I don't know what it is. But anyway, you guys are fun, though. Out of all the audiences I've ever performed for, you guys have been one of them. That's for sure. <laughs> so growing up is weird, man. So you got along with your mom and dad, man. Remember the stupid stuff your mom and dad would say to you when you were a kid, too? My mom would yell so loud, my ears would bleed. Then they're like, did you hear me? Remember that? You're like, Helen Keller heard you. Okay, lady? <laughs> I'm blind. <laughs> my mom would look at me, do I look stupid? How do you answer that one? Backing up, trying to come up with something quick. My sister's in the bedroom. It's a trick question. Don't answer. Where's my eye? I'm a child of the 60s. We got spanked. Am I right, lady? Come on. Yeah, we got our butt beat with a spoon like Carrie was talking about. Everything's a weapon. Ping pong paddle, a spoon, Hot Wheels track. Remember the Hot Wheels track? The boys know what I'm talking about. We had that, they just whip a piece of that urethane nightmare belt, right? They're letting me have it. I'm thinking I'm being beat with my own toys. Praise the Lord. Thank God I didn't get that wood burning set I wanted. Dodge that bullet. That erector set probably smarts too. We always got spanked. We were stupid too. We used to go get them the belt. Remember that? Go get my belt. All right. Remember that? What's wrong with us? Fetus didn't get enough oxygen in the womb or what? I'm walking by my sister. Hey, guess what I get to do right now? I get to go get the belt. Yeah, and you want to know why? Because I'm a moron. That's why. I gave my dad the belt off the bathrobe. Let it fly, pops. Let it fly. Let, let that terry cloth rip. Weird growing up, you know? It's too much. You got brothers and sisters, dude? Two brothers and plus you? So how many would that be? He's like, oh my God, I got to do math? Forget about it. I didn't even bring my abacus. Don't act like you don't know what an abacus is. You're going on tour with me, lady. I'm loving you. The blonde chick is digging me. But anyway, you married or single? You're single, look at you. Uh, you're on NyQuil or something. I don't know what the... <laughs> on ice. Girls doing Geritol shooters up here. I don't know. Oh, here's a Sharpie. We'll play Connect the Liver Spots. You people are fun. It's an older crowd. It's not a dry seat in the house anyway. You guys are friends here? Okay, good. So what's your name, sweetie? Jessica. Jessica. Okay, like rabbit? We could only hope. Am I right, Jessica? Have you ever been married? Yeah. Why? No more, though. The guy's a bum, right? Yeah. Bum! Big bum! <laughs> it wasn't Ron, was it? No, I'm just kidding. Ron's a good guy. You got kids, too? Sucking you dry? No, good for you. Out of the house. Give them the boot. That's what I got. Grandkids. There you go. Oh, yeah. Load them up, like Carrie said, with chili and nachos and send them home. We gave them a pot of coffee. Here you go. They're all yours. They'll be up till like New Year's. There you go. And we taught them how to smoke, too. 
I just taught my son how to. My son's 12. He's 5'11". I kid you not. And growing. I got him doing two packs a day. You don't even want to know. I say, and don't even breathe it out. What is this, September? Three months. It's Christmas. What the heck? Didn't we just have it? We just took down the tree. Christmas. It's almost here, man. I hate Christmas, too. I don't hate Christmas. I love Christmas. I love the meaning of Christmas, but it's too commercialized with the music and stuff. Santa Claus is coming to town. You know that song? He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. Where I live, that's a peeping Tom. Okay, people? You don't even want to know. Anyway, well, you guys are fun, man. So what else can we talk about? I got all kinds of stuff to talk about. So anyway, you guys met where again? San Clemente. San Clemente. <laughs> she, she says no. Where did you meet? Coconuts on Cabo Beach. Capo? Okay, you could have just said San Juan Capistrano. All right, relax. The young yuppie kids are here tonight. I got zits older than both of you people, okay? You know these young Ken and Barbie, you know how they do. You know they have divorce Barbie now in the stores? Isn't that sad? Divorce Barbie? She comes with all of Ken's stuff. Did you know that? <laughs> he got the pink Corvette. Hello! <laughs> I'm getting older too, man. Got to go see my doctor. Don't you hate that? My doctor hates me. He gave my prostate the finger. Can you believe that, people? <laughs> Who gives you a full exam and then puts on a glove to shake your hand? Am I right? I don't think that's right. The medical profession, they mess with you because they got a DR in front of their name. Am I right? That's not right. What is that? Durr. Am I right? <laughs> PhD. Sound that out. <laughs> That's all that is. Just, they think they're better than me because they went to school. Whatever. The only thing that kept me out of college was high school. I'll be honest with you people. In case you got to graduate, lady. You know why I hated school? Because my teacher would put me down, dude. She's like, you're stupid, you're an idiot, and you're ugly. And that hurt my feelings because I was homeschooled. That stinks. <laughs> Yeah. You know, the worst part about homeschool is prom night. Am I right, people? You got to dance with your dad. Hey, how's it going? I said, how's it going? It's a nice headband. It's a little callback from a joke earlier. Look, at your friend just got a joke. That's exciting. What's your, friend, what's your name, sweetie? Kelly. Kelly, of course it is. Look at you. Kelly and what? Of course, cheerleaders probably when you were young. Blonde cheerleaders. Give me an A. Give me a. Can I buy a vowel? Give me an A. <laughs> you guys are fun. Also single? Okay. What are you sucking helium? What's going on over there? The hydro flask is full of scotch, I think. Sneaking that in here. Been drinking that new wine before the show. Well, that's good. Where you live? Where's home? No, the dude behind you. Of course. <laughs> Who have I been talking to, lady? Again, the blondes. You guys know what I'm talking about right here. Mission Viejo, also Mission. Elisa Viejo. A lot of viejos around here. <laughs> you getting any of these jokes, beard boy? What's happening? Again, thanks for dressing up. Is there a tractor pulling Corona we don't know about? Because this dude is ready. He's ready. How about Chino? You ever been to Chino? There's a smell in Chino. They should call that city Cochino. Am I right, people? Somebody pooted in Chino. <laughs> I said pooted. There's a couple you guys married behind them. What are you looking down for, sir? Look at you. I'm talking to you. Oh, my gosh. Okay, good. There you go. Captain Kangaroo showed up. Look at that. Bob Keishin, everyone. And I know you guys are old enough to know who Bob Keishin is. What's your name, sir? Joe. Joe? Sure it is, Joe. Is that the lovely Mrs. Joe? I'm going to ask her, because you don't know nothing, Joe. <laughs> Look at that shirt, Joe. 
Tom Selleck called. He wants it back, Joe. Are you married to Joe, lady? How many years? 33, yeah. So, Joe, you're definitely broke. Am I right, Joe? The women are nuts. Am I, t am I right? You have a little fight with the wife there, too? Never? What a liar you guys are. You know where liars go? The upper room. Am I right, Joe? Had a fight last week with my wife. You know how it ended? She was on her hands and knees crawling to me, Joe. She was saying, uh, come out from underneath that bed and finish the fight, you coward. I totally see you. Stop hiding behind our son. Get out of there. <laughs> Women, can you believe that? Trying to better us. Anyway, well, you guys are fun. You're choking. I'm doing my job there. It's too much. It's too much comedy in one night. You guys, I got one clap over here. Thank you. Pick up my DVD. It's all the clean comedy out there. I got stuff, too. Five bucks, man. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and it, it helps. It goes towards the homeless, which will be me if you don't pick one up, please. Because my wife is nuts. Anyway, I'll do some impressions for you guys. I've been fighting a cold, so hopefully the voices will sound okay. So I've been working a lot, you know? And uh, do you work or are you retired there, lady? Me? No, the dude behind you. <laughs> she knows I've been talking to her, right? <laughs> Plus, I say, lady. <laughs> the guy in back's like, me? <laughs> yeah, you in the skirt, sir. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, lady, you, lady. I work for you. I, you, work, I, you work for me? <laughs> oh, you're broke then for sure. Are you retired or what do you do? What do you do? Customer insurance rep for an insurance agent? That's a big old tattoo, isn't it? What, what, what does that mean? What do you do? Okay, you don't have a job, do you? She's making this crap up as she goes. Oh, it's insurance stuff on the phone sometimes. And there's a broker dude and this coffee and a cinnamon roll every now and then. Talk to my friend. Well, that's good. This is what I do. <laughs> I love it. Well, here we go. Fresh from a tweet. Trump. It is absolutely terrific to be here tonight. Tremendous, tremendous. I met some great people here. Great. Great people doing terrific things. Terrific. Terrific. I love Mission Viejo. Upper room. Tremendous. Ron, love what you're doing. I don't know what you do, but I love it. Tremendous. <laughs> terrific. Terrific. Ran into Hillary in the men's room, as you know. <laughs> Tremendous. What's that? Oh, it's the wall. Anyway. I love everyone. I love the blacks, the whites, the Hispanics. As you know, the Hispanics. Tremendous. Had a chimichanga earlier. Tremendous. And a churro. What's... Uh, yeah! Trump! Now I gotta do the other guy. Yeah, Barack. Barack Obama, he's like, uh, really, America? Really? I mean, the man's a bully. The man is a bully. Bully, 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 bully. I know it. My wife, Beyonce, knows it. Our two girls, Venus, Serena. Uh, my, my, my. Remember George W. Bush? He would hack up the American language. Hey, America, George W. Bush here. That's right. I'm from Texas with a, uh, a T. <laughs> I like Liam Neeson, man. Liam Neeson from Taken. Remember those movies? First they took his daughter. Oh, no. Then they took his wife. Lucky. <laughs> you don't want to call Liam Neeson trying to sell him something at dinner time. Can you imagine getting his number? I want you to listen to me very carefully, my friend. Very carefully. Steve and your 
solar panels. I will find you. Hello, Steve? What happened, honey? I don't know, he hung up. And we need solar panels. Hey, you know what? Remember John Travolta, right? That's right. Hey, this is John Travolta. And you know what? A lot of people say that me and my movies are like totally immature, right? Well, you know what I say to you? Up your nose with a rubber hose, right? <laughs> and Stallone, I love Stallone. He has another movie coming out. Please. Another Rambo. Oh, my God. How old is he? The last Rocky, he fought senility. Remember that? But I love Stallone. You know, right? First he was Rocky. Hey, right, yo, right? Yo, it don't matter how hard you get hit, right? It just matter how you get back up, right? And then he was Rambo. Hey, right? It don't matter how hard you get hit, right? It matter you get back up, yo, right? And you know what you Like you need subtitles for a Stallone movie. Like, I'll follow you right in the pool, you know what I mean? I don't know. Shut up. <coughs> <laughs> I want to see Stallone do a commercial. Hey, yo, right, hooked on phonics. Work for me, right? <laughs> hey, right. <laughs> Stallone has kept my career going. Arnold Schwarzenegger, he was our governor. Oh my gosh, what were we thinking? Come on, people. I voted for Gary Coleman. Arnold, he couldn't even pronounce the name of the state, right? Listen to me, this is Arnold and I'm pumped and I'm excited. You know, because I'm the governor of California, you know, I love California. Where's California? Illegal aliens were telling Arnold, Orele, dude, speak English. Orele. <laughs> They'll deport you, Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> he was always, get down. Listen to me, get down. Get down. <laughs> yes, and the chopper. <laughs> <clears throat> get down in the chopper. Get down, get down, get down. I want to go pillow shopping with Arnold. What kind of pillow should I buy? Get down. <laughs> See, it's because it's a soft pillow, lady, lady up front, not, not Joe in the back. <laughs> you guys are too much. What a night. Skyrocketing. Anyway. Who else do I do? Owen Wilson. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Look at my nose. It's huge. <laughs> hey, this is Larry the Cable Guy. Get her done. That's right. Get her done. Hey, I'm down here in Mission VAO. <laughs> hey, my sister's got moles all over her face, and one of them bit me. <laughs> it's too much, people. Too much. You know, would have been a good president, Jack Nicholson, because he wouldn't care. He'd just answer the front door with our, you know, he'd be like, well, well, well. If it isn't our old friend, North Korea, here's Johnny. Yes, Nicholson. I'm going way back for the older crowd. The 60 plus paper. Remember Ronald Reagan? Well, yes. Um, as you know, Nancy and I, we, um, well, <laughs> what was the question again? <laughs> I got to get out of here. Uh, make sure you stop by and say hello to Carrie and me and uh, support what we do. I want to share a little bit about myself, and then I'll leave you with another laugh. I want to thank Ron and everyone from the Upper Room for having us out. It's a great ministry. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is.
You know, I love doing comedy. I've been doing it for 30 years. Uh, full time is a career, man, and I'm really excited about that. You know, it's a gift from God. Uh, I was doing a lot of stupid things when I was young, a lot of alcohol, a lot of drugs, hanging out with the wrong crowd, you know, testimony like a lot of us. But, you know, I was going nowhere, and I knew I had this gift that I could make people laugh, and, and I wanted to be a comic, but, you know, I wasn't doing anything with it. And it wasn't until someone shared with me that, that God loves me, and I didn't know anyone loved me. Now, look, my, my parents divorced when I was a kid. There was no real love. Uh, y you know, we just did our own thing. We, we never were in school, and uh, I, I, never, I never knew love. But it wasn't until that they shared what, what God had done for me, that he loved me enough to send his son to, to die a horrible death on a cross. You, you know, and, and the Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised his son from the dead, you'll be saved. So here I am, I'm just being a knucklehead, man. And I, I'm drinking and, I, you know, I'm on stage trying to make people laugh. I'm drunk, they're drunk, it ain't working out, you know. And you try to quit and, you know, the, the, those vices always pull you back. And sin is fun, you know. If sin wasn't fun, we, we wouldn't do it, right? But the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But it also tells me that God came to gave, give his son as a living sacrifice for me. And I don't know why he did that. Even on the way out here driving, I'm just thanking God. Why would you even think about me or love me or love any of us? If it wasn't for God's mercy, we'd all be consumed by hellfire. If it wasn't for his love and grace and mercy, and they're new every day. And I didn't know that. I didn't know someone loved me. My dad didn't love me. My mom, I, you know, they just divorced. My mom had to raise four kids. She wasn't around. It was horrible. Alcoholism in the family, broken home, you know, drug abuse, drug addiction. But it wasn't until God stepped in and intervened. And he loves me enough, and he loves you enough to, to go all the way to that cross, to, to show what real love is. And God has a better plan for you. He's got a better life. I've had more fun as a Christian than I've ever had when I was living in the world, you know, because he's done tremendous things for me. He's done great things for me. And what it is is now, I'm, even when I mess up, though, it's okay now because now someone's got my back, and I didn't have that before. I didn't understand real love until I had kids. And when they come to you and go, I'm sorry, Dad, will you forgive me? And of course you forgive them because you love them. And that's what he does for you and I. If you're about your father's business, he's definitely about yours. And he loves you and he's got so, so much more for you. And he's done all that and he's given us gifts and he threw an eternal life. It's like a win-win situation. So if you believe in God, and a lot of people do, that means you probably believe in heaven. And if you believe in heaven, then we're halfway there. Just know that there's a real place called hell too. And God spoke mostly about hell. In fact, Jesus spoke more of hell in the New Testament than he did of heaven. And why? Is because he wanted to save us from that. He didn't want us to go there. And if you have loved ones who have gone on into heaven and you want to see them too, then you need to give your life. And all you do is you say a simple prayer. You say, Lord, forgive me, I've messed up. Be my Lord and my friend and my Savior. Come live in my heart, man. In Jesus' name I pray. You just say that and God will come into your heart. You know, I did that in the early 80s, and I've never regretted it. I've had a great life, and, 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 and I get to do what I love for a living, and, and I, I meet great people. But the thing is, God has such a, such a greater, greater vision for your life than you do. And if you feel like you're kind of running around and running into walls, well, you know what? Why don't you run into the arms of Jesus? Why don't you ask God into your heart? Why don't you give it a shot and see if I'm not right? No one's life could have been worse than mine. I was living in the streets in, in Baldwin Park, you know, in the early 80s in a drug house with a mattress on the floor, no water, no electricity, selling dope to kids. Man, that was my life. But God has completely turned that around. And now I'm here to say that he loves me and he loves you and he wants to just use you and wipe you out in his love. So don't leave without Jesus. Th think about that through the week and know that God has a plan for you. Hey, if you enjoyed the comedy, my name is Scott Wood. If you didn't like it, it's uh, Steve Martin. So, <laughs> and make sure you come by the tables and say hello to Carrie and me. I got a DVD for five bucks, and you can pick that up. It's all the clean comedy impressions. I'll close with this. You guys have been fun. Thank you so much, Upper Room. You guys have been a blast. Yeah, give yourselves a round of applause. How about a round of applause for my buddy, Carrie Pomarelli? So funny. Check her out online. Let me close with this. I love the old movies on the old movie channel, and I'm watching those, and I love the old kung fu karate movies where the lips never match. They're the worst dubbed movies, and they always look like this, and I'm going to close with this. This is called Kung Fu Master.
<laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> hey, you. <laughs> That's right. I'm talking to you. <laughs> Come on. Come on. It's on the DVD. Let's fight. <laughs> I'm Scott Wood. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Upper room, a standing ovation by two people, three people. Let's get it up, people. Much love from the white boy. God bless you guys. Thank you, Ron, and everyone at the upper room. Keep it going for my buddy, Mr. Ron Strand. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> oh. Funny, huh? Funny, funny stuff tonight. Yeah. Laughter, was it? A cheerful heart is good medicine. Some of the Proverbs say, yeah, good. We need to laugh, right? And thanks, Scott, for preaching the gospel. Can you bring up the house lights, Tony? Thanks. Um, hey, don't forget to register for next month. Registration's open at theupperroompresents.com. Theupperroompresents.com. And uh, if uh, you prayed that prayer tonight, uh, come and talk to me. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, to give you a hope and a future. And that's God's promise for those of you who know, who know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you don't know that promise, I'd love to talk to you about what it means to be a Christian. So God bless you guys. Have a fun rest of your weekend. Don't forget to uh, register, and uh, we'll see you next month. Thanks a lot. Thank you.